And it's very interesting when you start to pay attention to what the cattle are eating, both the cows and the calves. Because oftentimes you'll, you'll see the calves selecting something a little different than their mothers are. Are their needs different? Their needs are different. Exactly. You know, that, that these cows, they're just trying to maintain and lactate, right? And, and gestate if they're bred back. Mm -hmm. But these calves, they have a much mm -hmm. higher energy and protein requirement mm -hmm. because they're so actively growing. So it, it's pretty curious when you watch them. And one of the things that we note, and, and you can even see this right now, a lot of times these calves will graze a little higher than their mothers will. Mm -hmm. And what you'll see is you'll see them picking, if there's clover blossoms, they'll pick clover blossoms because they're very high in sugars. Okay. If you see seed heads, a lot of times these calves will eat a lot of seed heads, particularly when they're still sort of in that dough stage. Because if you, if you actually measure plant bricks on those at that time, it can be very high. And so, the cows oftentimes will ignore those, but yet their calves will be in there purposefully going around and plucking seed heads to eat those seed heads. And then when I pay attention to the cows themselves and, and the heifers in here that are being bred and watch the way they graze, mm -hmm. you know, then there's, there's actually differences between individuals. Some individuals, I notice, they're grazing much higher. Mm -hmm. They're getting that intermediate and top story. And then others are sticking their head much further in the sward and, and grazing down. And, and those are the ones that are trying to pick out the clover, <laughs> and th the lower growing clover, right? So they're going right after the clover. And then you've got some alfalfa in this mix. Mm -hmm. And so I saw one cow making her rounds and she was purposefully select going alfalfa plant to alfalfa plant. And of course we know that as these cows consume more protein in their diet, then what's that gonna do to their manure, it's right? It's gonna get loose and runny, right? Mm -hmm. Because they're, they're consuming more protein relative to energy and fiber. And as we looked at that cow that was purposefully selecting the, the alfalfa, as she turned around and we noticed right around her tail head and her tail yeah, itself. Sure. It was pretty, yeah. pretty dirty. Yeah. You know, so it was very evident that this isn't the only day, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's her habit. So just like people, different people yeah. select different things to eat. Sure. We actually find that our cows do the same. But in a herd, then what happens is that evens out, right? It averages out. Exactly, exactly. So that gives us the overall impact so as we build that complexity, the other benefits that we get are that our livestock are able to better balance their own diet. If we have a monoculture or a near monoculture, that's the only thing they have to choose from. And if that particular forage species is not at its peak, and they're only at their peak a short time every growing season, then our livestock are going to be deficient in many of the different minerals and potentially protein, energy, and so forth. So our livestock with a monoculture and near monoculture are far less able to be able to balance their diets and to keep themselves performing at a very high level and to keep their immune system strong and resist disease and so forth. The more complexity and diversity in the plant species, the better able those livestock are to balance their diet, to also gain the medicinal benefits, the antiparasitic benefits that we desire.